Welcome to this next episode of YouTube, where there's really no theme, just more or less the day in the life of what goes on around the wolf exhibit. Uh, we do want to reference that Aiden is very relaxed about going in and out of holding. As a matter of fact, he's been pawing at the gate trying to get into holding because he can see Oscar better when he's in the lab, so that's been something he's kind of focused on. Yeah, Grizzer does focus a little bit on the exhibit pack when they're getting attention. One of the things that we're doing is continuing to use wood chips uh, to uh, give them a nice resting place. They have a tendency to want to stay on the top of the dens. And I do want to reference how the webcams on the exhibit pack are temporarily in for repair. We had a power surge that seems to have caused some problems with the camera, so hope to get those back up and running within the next week. Uh, they did go out Federal Express, and hopefully we'll get a quick turnaround on those and get those back up. The other thing that uh, has been going on is as fall approaches, we're starting to see a lot more wildlife activity within the enclosure, and that means squirrels and uh, small rodents, um, uh, migrating birds, those type of things are kind of active. And so you're going to see a little bit of this clip where a red squirrel is kind of taunting Denali for a bit. And uh, so there is a lot of stimulus that goes on within the exhibit that's really nothing um, that we're doing, just a matter of the vegetation management that we have. We keep a fairly wooded enclosure and try to keep the uh, area uh, and ha inhabitable for a lot of other wildlife species that will come and go. So that is something that uh, spent a little bit of observations this week of watching the red squirrel interactions. And obviously scent marking is a big part of uh, wolf behavior, so we do see quite a bit about that. Uh, as you saw when the wood chips went in, uh, scent marking is a common thing, whether it be a urine mark over it or a scent rolling on it, uh, that's a very common behavior. Other than that, the winter coats are coming back in. You can see Denali starting to grow a winter coat there. And this is Aiden. And anyone who's really been following Aiden in his three years of life, he really should see the transformation in this particular wolf. He's gaining weight. He's um, not kind of that fragile little uh, Omega that he used to be. Uh, he's got a very healthy winter coat and, and, and doing extremely well. Denali always has been uh, very healthy, very... Uh, you know, tall, lanky, uh, good for confirmation, and so he continues to be the tallest wolf here, although Aiden is now the heaviest wolf here. Uh, of course, that is really subject to when they're weighed and what kind of feeding um, has taken place, but basically those two are, are very compatible, and you'll see them interact, and not any real aggression issues, a little bit of dominance starting, and this is something that we're seeing not just with Aiden and Denali. We're starting to see the winter kind or that fall transition of hormones um, to getting a little bit more uh, standovers and you'll see one with Aiden and Denali here and actually notice the posturing here uh, Denali got caught by surprise and Aiden came up to him showed, showed a little intimidation then tries to do a little confrontation with Aiden Aiden ignores him and Aiden is still keyed into the wolf care staff you know there's no doubt that he's still guarding wolf care and very possessive of them but What's interesting is that he'll come right over in a very confident tail and do a stand over Denali. And as we progress to pups in 2012, we're very, very keyed into these the dynamics of these two individuals and who's really going to be the leader when we go back to a pack of four. And it's Aiden's got a lot of the characteristics of a leader. Um, he's certainly gained some confidence. And again, a lot of that is, is Oscar for whatever reason. He is really enamored with Oscar, and he spends a fair amount of time at the fence with him, and in a very submissive, whining posture, not uh, aggression at all, whereas Denali here pushes buttons a little bit for Oscar. Grizzer, again, got wood chips as well, and so again, either you can urine mark or you can scent roll, but it's a different smell, and they like it, so this is you know, Grizzer in a scent rolling posture on top of his den. And his camera and Shadow Malik's camera were not affected uh, by the power surge. They're uh, hosted in the Wolf Lab, and so it's a completely different system, and we have a different setup here in the lab. So their cameras survived the storm pretty well, whereas the main exhibit had some issues. So that's nice to get Grizzer back on the webcam, and we and, you know, do know that he's not there a lot uh, because we see him in the front yard here quite a bit. He uh, has access to both the pack holding area as well as the new area and so that means that he's usually up here watching where Oscar is and kind of interacting at the fence with Oscar but every once in a while he'll take a run back to the back part of the, the new exhibit 
And uh, you'll see his head is, uh, again, healed up. It's just that it doesn't have any hair on it. Uh, we are using the cinnamon again. We're not seeing a lot of response from the cinnamon. I, again, that was someone who gave us a, um, some advice on uh, that it had been used on wound treatment on horses before, so we thought we'd try it. You know, it doesn't hurt. It does make his head a little browner, so that makes it a little less glaring, uh, that new pink skin. But, you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt him, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So we're going to just have to wait and see if those hair follicles will come in on their own. Uh, definitely his hair is getting longer in the front, and so we're not worried at all about cold. Uh, we, you know, we, we know this, uh, the uh, animals produce a lot of body heat, and so we're not too worried about that. And we also know that that winter coat is going to really advance, and you're going to see some hair cover there. In retirement, of course, uh, what's good for one pack is good for the rest. So they get wood chips as well, and this is Shadow doing the same thing. Scent rolling on those new chips, so uh, they smell good. And uh, it's certainly something that we do a little bit for comfort, but it also has a little bit of bug control, although this is aspen, not cedar. Cedar is the one with oils that has a little bit more bug repellent, but it's just comfortable for them, and it's a good stimulus, and it's something that we do uh, during the summertime. Once uh, fall approaches and we get freezing weather and the ground starts to freeze, then we'll switch to straw for the insulating value. But right now the chips are, again, just a some, uh, stimulus for them and also gives them... Um, I like say a little bit of bug repellent, but not not too much. And then Malik goes in and joins um, after Shadow. Again, Shadow is the dominant wolf in this exhibit, and uh, Malik is second ranking, has always been second ranking to Shadow. We are seeing a little bit of posturing between these two individuals, but uh, temperatures tonight are supposed to dip down in the 40s, so these wolves are ready for winter. You're starting to see a winter coat grow back in here. Uh, their, their undercoats are starting to, to fill in, and so that makes their guard here a little bit thicker uh, and certainly a little more pronounced. So definitely a little bit of a challenge because it's still August and we still can have some warm days. And what they do is they tend to retreat back to the bare soil where they can get the coolness of the ground because at night the ground cools off. And even in the warmest parts of the day, they can dig and still get a nice cool spot to lay. But Shadow, as being the dominant wolf, really likes to be up high likes to be keyed into what's going on. Uh, you will see him a lot on camera. And what's interesting here is just watching his ear po postures. Uh, it's a windy day, so that makes it a little bit more uh, anxiety, uh, meaning that when it's windy, you know, you can't hear what's going on very well. The noise is kind of uh, mixed up with the wind. So you'll see his ear postures go all different directions. And that's, uh, again, a communication. The panting is just trying to cool off. And this is a little bit of that posturing that I was talking about. These two um, don't have a lot of physical altercations, meaning a lot of biting, a lot of grabbing, a lot of chasing. They're at they're 11. They're going on 12, and so their body postures or or uh, posturing from the standpoint of dominance is fairly subdued. But it's fairly important, and you'll see uh, Malik just walk very very slowly and try to present himself and try to face off with Shadow and. Shadow is not going to take any of that from Malik, and so Malik just kind of backs off and walks away. So Shadow is famous for doing chin rests on Malik. And again, Oscar is doing good, and here what you're seeing is Aiden and Denali. Uh, again, getting to greet Oscar at the fence, and you can see why we put that protective panel up. Those guys are right at the fence, and they want to be nose-to-nose, -nose, and actually they want to paw through and, and uh, reach into it to... Uh, uh, touch Oscar and we don't want that to happen. We certainly want Oscar protected. So that was Denali first and now you're seeing Aiden. Uh, again, Aiden's a lot more social. Uh, you see tail wags, you see high pitch whining, no aggression whatsoever from Aiden towards Oscar and Oscar's pretty oblivious to Aiden. Oscar will be a little more tense with Denali because Denali's showing body language that's a little bit more dominant and so Oscar doesn't take to that very well but Aiden, he, he takes to extremely well. He really likes Aiden. Aiden likes him. Aiden watches for him in the mornings when we uh, come out of the lab or if Oscar's on a field trip, you know, they're right at the gate trying to, you know, see him as soon as he comes back. So that's been a really good thing. Probably is a little bit of a glimpse into the future of life with pups. We definitely believe that Aiden's going to be a real strong, socially dominant and socially uh, bonding wolf towards those pups and that's probably going to help his dominance quite a bit. So while Aiden and Denali are getting a lot of Oscar's focus there, Grizzard does patiently wait um, for his opportunity to see Oscar, and so he'll come right over, and as I said, 
That's why he's probably not on the camera a lot. Uh, just uh, usually up in the front trying to keep things under control or at least see what's going on. So that's it for Wolf Care. And again, thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted on future in, uh, endeavors and hope the cameras, the webcams are back up soon. Thanks again.